born and raised in Paris. I've been, uh, how can I say that? I would say typical French Parisian boy. And uh, I went to see the recital of my best friend. I was six years old. And this balloon came down the stage and that was my calling. I saw this and I said, I want to do that mom. And she's a single mother. So she said, sure. So I gave her as well some liberty because I will go into class and she was working during that time. So I was a dancer taking twice a week classes. I was, I found amazing people that saw my talents and they guide me through my education, my dance education. I ended up studying at the Conservatory Superior of Paris. It's a school that's free. It's a, it's a huge thing for us because in France, when you have talent, they recognize the talent, I mean, at my time, and they help you. And that's what they did for me. They, I studied at the Conservatory, graduated at, uh, in Paris uh, in 93. And to, to go back a bit and the, to, for you to understand why I went to America, I think you have to think about the time when I was 16. 16 years old, imagine a mixed race uh, in classes, not loving dance, but not understanding that could be a, a, a job, that could be my livelihood. And my teacher sent me this tape, I will always remember, and it was a VHS, a VHS of, the, of the work, it was a documentary about Alvin Ailey and Mr. Ailey was sitting on a stool, I will always remember, and he was talking about Blue Sweet. He was talking about this elegant uh, artist, this African-American who had story to tell, who came from the South, and all this, and for me, it was a true revelation, like the work, his work. Uh, I could see myself, I could, I could actually identify for the first time to an artist, so, age 16, well, I was maybe 15, 16, I said, I'm going to America to dance with Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre. It was a big dream, a huge dream. Um, I saw them perform in Paris Opera, I think it was 92, just before I graduated. And I saw them on stage in Paris Opera. And for me as well, that meant a lot. This black, beautiful dancer in the Paris Opera and dancing like, I've never seen. It was a huge inspiration. It made me, it actually sealed the deal. I said, I'm going. Won a competition in Italy and I'm um, 18 years old and in the summer of 93 in New York. Study there, uh, dance with uh, Philadenco, a company that actually put me, uh, focused me. Don Albert the group, and then Avinelli American Dance Theatre did seven seasons there, Do, did incredible touring. I remember like highlights being in South Africa in the township and teaching Revelation. This French man teaching Revelation to these kids. And when I think about it, it's, it's, it's amazing. To me, I, I was so lucky to be able to do what I love. You have to understand when I, uh, joined the company, Alvinelli American Dance Theater. I mean, I was walking in the moon. It was more than a dream. I was in heaven. Then seeing the revelation, the iconic piece. You know, it's funny because I was, look, I was thinking of the roles that I danced in Revelation and I think I've done it all, except the third variation of Cinnamon. But I experienced every every part of this piece, and I realize how impactful it is. You know, my mother doesn't speak English, she's a French lady, and when you see her joy watching Revelation, you understand it transcends everything, it transcends languages, it transcends religion. It's a spiritual, a true spiritual experience. Uh, I mean, I danced it, I can't even tell you how many, hundreds of times, I'll say but in different countries, one reaction, standing ovation, screaming, asking an encore, uh, seeing in the eyes of people how this peace resonates in their spirits. 
It's pretty profound. The work of Mr. Ailey to me was something that to experience was, was I mean, amazing. And uh, amazing is a, is a gentle word. Uh, it was so uh, transcending. That's better. <laughs> um, Talibeti, and on, uh, in Europe, I don't know if you know Talibeti. Talibeti is a, a, a choreographer that I actually had so much fun to dance. It's a bit jazz. Uh, I danced this piece called Stack Up, and I was a drunk and a pimp <laughs> in the piece. And it's this Harlem uh, uh, street, and there is that this, there is two rival bands, and there is this drug dealer, and it, this is just a, it's a peak. Very fun to dance. This is why I like to dance. I, lo I love to dance with the LA companies because it's not just dancing. It's like you embody, you become characters. And actually this stayed with me because when I look for dancers, I look for story, I look for character, I look for individuality. So all this prepared me to be who I am today. I believe that I live the American dream I think I've been lucky to come to a country and blossom artistically, professionally. So I, the last year of my career with Avinelli American Dance Theatre, I had the opportunity to become a resident choreographer at, in this, this new company called Cedar Lake Contemporary Ballet. I was lucky to be appointed director I was lucky to have the trust of this one founder. This story is, even if I talk about it, people, uh, people believe because there's some, of pe some of the people saw the company that it actually existed, but it was something that's out of a, of a film or a roman, a roman, like book, novel. Uh, because here I am, I'm 29 years old running this a multi-million company and have my own home. I had two carriage houses in Manhattan on 26th Street. Uh, what he did for me, he, he gave me a sense of understanding who I am as a director, gave the op my, an, an amazing opportunity to European choreographer that hasn't been discovered in America. So I was lucky enough to bring uh, Sidi Labi Shakari. I think he was his first creation in America. Same thing for Crystal Pite, same thing for Alpha Schechter. Now they are as, uh, like household. They are a maker, dance maker, and everybody knows them. But back in 2005, that was not the case. So bringing diversity has been something that always been in me. Today, it's a necessity. People are not talking about it all the time. But in, for me, it's always been present because in my life, in my, in my career, uh, in my training, I, I had always a sense of what was diverse and what, how could we be more diverse and what does it mean? So with Cedar Lake, I got a chance to actually do this, create this heaven of 16 dancers coming from different world, diff all around the world, different experiences, different stories, and it was a, an amazing experience as far as such a learning curve for me. Everything happened for a reason. I stayed there 10 years. I needed to disc feel different things, experience, meet different people. But I believe all these years in America, especially Cedar Lake, prepared me for what I'm doing now at Rambert. So. It probably was shocking for people when I resigned from Cedar Lake, but it was necessary. 
necessary for me personally. And it was important for me to find my voice as a, as a creator. So I resigned and met Franco Dragon, who is uh, uh, one of the founders of, of Cirque du Soleil. So those shows that are out of this world, where you, you create a, a merge of Cirque with dance and uh, aquatic show. That's how I will describe it, but I had the chance to work with him for four years. I'd done five shows for him, uh, actually one in Paris. It was a cabaret. It was, a, it was um, Le Lido, which is a very famous French cabaret in the Champs-Élysées. that and then I went to Macau and worked on the taboo version. It's a, one of another show. Um, I went to Moscow and worked with Philip Kirkorov, the superstar singer in, 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 uh, in Russia, in the Kremlin. I uh, went six months in Dubai creating La Perle. So all this work, working with uh, not just dancers and that's what I needed. I understood the art of entertaining and, and come out of my security zone of the dance world because they didn't care about Cedar Lake or what I've done. They care about who I was now and what I could teach them. And so doing this for four years was fun, but I realized what I missed. I missed a home and I missed uh, um, truly uh, see the growth of artists because when you do shows like this with Frank Rodagan it's very intense but then you leave and you don't see you don't see the growth you don't see the maturity sometimes or you, you just have to go after four years working with Frank Rodagan uh, I had this opportunity to come to London and come to Rambert. Rambert is a name that I always heard. I mean, in France, when you're a kid, you hear Les Ballets Rambert. Uh, it's, a, it's an institution. And I was asked to oversee the company for the transition because they were uh, transitioning from one artistic director to find a new one. And I was as well asked to curate a Rambert two, a junior company. So, because I think people believe that I can spot talent. I like to believe that too. And it's not spotted. It's like I see you and I see what you can offer right now. But I see as well what you could be. And that's for me very clear when I see a, a dance, a human being moving across the floor in auditions. So in 2017, uh, I was here between America and London to help, to help this company because this company, as you see, uh, it's a company that's in the heart of the British. It's, a, it's a, the little darling. It's almost 100 years old. In 2018 to 19, I applied for the job. I applied to be the artistic director because uh, I realized what was Rambert and what Rambert could be. I am very excited about the opportunity to be the artistic director of Rambert because there is so much possibilities. And you know, when you are in charge and have the responsibility of creating a mission statement or a mission, artistic mission for the company, that's when you're starting to say to yourself, who are we? What is our purpose? And what are we meant to be? One of my first creations was Marion Motin. Marion Motin, French, and it's not because she's French <laughs> I, I, I curated this work, it's because she is talented and needed 
a, a place to explore and share a talent. Uh, uh, Marion is known for uh, incredible work with um, pop stars and doing uh, musicals, but when you see her work, she's distinctive and she has something to say. So here I am contacting her saying, work with my company, do something that's, that's for you very clear and honest and use my incredible dancer because that will elevate elevate your vision and that's what happened the piece was a success the piece reached a, a, an audience that we haven't had before <laughs> One of our goals is to develop the audience, having audiences that haven't seen Rambert but relate to Rambert. So here I am building the rep that is relevant, exciting and welcoming. And when I say the word diverse, people use that word very different. We use it a lot right now. I want to use it in the profound sense of not only we are diverse, different voices, but the repertory itself, the work that we're dancing is very different from another, is very much creating a palette of our society. I like to believe that when you come see Rambert, you can see yourself on stage you can relate to at least one of our dancers. A work that has as well shaped the renaissance of Rambert is Draw From Within. Bim van de Kibus, a dance maker, a videographer, and it was very important for me to bring him here because I felt that he will bring to he will bring my dancer to a certain level. It was meant to happen, and COVID hit. COVID hit everybody, and for us, there was no question stopping. Of course, we had to be safe, but I want. This is these days, during these days, that we, people need art. People need to be inspired. People need to dream. People need to laugh. People need to be taken out of their daily routines. So what I, I approached, I said to my board, I said to our, to our organization, I said, guys, we don't have a stage anymore. We don't have a chance to do this piece, but what about creating a one kind of experience, an experience actually that you will not have in the theater, you can't have in the theater, so that it is not a live, so we are talking about live stream, but it's not a recording, an archival live stream, meaning wide shot, middle shot, diagonal shot. What about using the medium, the camera, as a performer? What about bringing, bring it, bringing the audience on stage, what about getting into the mind of the, the, the creator and see through his eyes or her eyes? That's a very different thing because when you're on the proscenium on the stage, you do something on say, hoping that you, the audience follow or watch or see what you want them to see. Imagine that I can control that. Our live stream, we're doing it in our building because that's one thing is that we don't have a theater, so this is our theater, these five floors. And I bring, when I invite the choreographer, I say, this is your stage, do it 
the way you want. Make us travel throughout the space. Create a story. And what's exciting is that this happened at the same time. It's a true live experience. Meaning that when you watch it on your screen, the dancer are, are dancing for you, are in the building. So it's interesting because we did one for the American market. We had to dance at 1 a.m. because for them, it was a 7 p.m. show. How exciting for the dancer to really be there for the audience, knowing that the audience is it's watching and it's not a recording, a pre-recording. It's happening now. And we did one for Korea. It was 12 p.m. So we are adapting and that's the key, is that we don't freeze and be scared. We move on. We stand up and find a solution and find and work with what we have. With what we have, we create an experience. Right now, it's, the building is buzzing. It's happening in every floor. We have choreographer creating for the live stream. So currently, your Strongen, who came in January, left and it's coming back, is creating a new, our new live stream. It's called Rooms. 17 dancers that does 36 scenes, which means it's over 100 characters and they wear an, over 100 of costumes. So you understand how massive is this? And actually, and, and again, everything is live. So everything happens while you're watching it. 36 scenes. I think it's just worth watching it, just to see how we're handling this. It's, some of it is absurd, some of it is funny, some of it is dark, some of it is wrong. It's life. It's slices of life. You've seen recently Wim van de Kebus, so now it's your Strongen. You're going to have the Van Opstals, Imre and Marnie Van Opstals. Remember these names because they are the new talent, they are the new generation, and I'm so excited to uh, invite them to do a live stream, which will be combined with Marion Motin Rouge, that we have danced on stage. That's a live stream. And to conclude the season, I will do a live stream with the second company. So, I have different way to approach choreography. So sometimes it's a task. I'm hired to do this, and I do it. Sometimes it's a music, a sound, that inspires me and, and kind of is the machine or the, the driving engine to, to create. Sometimes it's the human that's in front of me. So it's a very, dif very different, time, different, different ways of approaching my work every time. And I like that. I don't have a recipe. I like to, to believe that it's a dialogue between who I, who I have in front of me. If I will dance one more time, one more night, ooh, okay, I will dance. Carmen, I never danced it. Matsek of Carmen.
That's what I will dance, because I was obsessed with this work. I'm obsessed with the, the, his work, actually. I don't miss Paris. I miss my friends. I miss my family. I love Paris and I love the culture. I am so kind of lucky. I didn't choose it, but to be born and raised in Paris, I had access to a lot of culture. That's why uh, that changed me, that shaped me, that made me who I am.